people. Karen here. It's a holiday here in Canada. Victoria Day. Beautiful, beautiful. 30 degrees out. It's about 86 degrees for those of you who do Fahrenheit. Uh, so I picked up a few records over the past two to three weeks. Not many, but went a couple times and grabbed, I think I went two trips to the record store and grabbed a few each time. So thought I'd share those with you guys because I picked up some good stuff. I was pretty happy. So what we're listening to right now is West African Cosmos. And this is probably my favorite out of the bunch that I picked up. And it was something, the only one that was completely unknown to me. I don't know the artist, nothing. And it is incredible. So maybe some of you guys know this. But it's kind of some funky, soulful, afro -beady, some jazziness, kind of just groovy music, you know? So... The contact written on here is in Paris. So yeah, it was recorded in Paris uh, in 1975 and uh, 1976 in Paris in two different studios. And if you look at these guys, they look like they've uh, some groovy ass dudes, you know what I mean? So I'll do a few needle drops on this. This is on CBS. This is a Canadian, Canadian copy, and uh, you can see here it's from Radio Canada, which is the French radio station. You know, like the French national uh, radio station here in Canada. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a taste. Uh, this this one wasn't a cheap pickup. This is probably the most expensive that I grabbed. The bunch wasn't crazy, but when I heard it, I had to have it. And it sells for quite a bit. Uh, it has sold for quite a bit online, so I didn't mind uh, spending a few bucks on it. Nothing crazy though. So nice vibes here. Just for the sake of time, I'll skip you along. So, on the African vibe, West African Cosmos. Definitely some kind of psychedelic guitar going on. Maybe a quick taste. I'll show you the label. This one side of the label is kind of covered up, has a sticker. I guess from a radio, another radio station it looks like. And then that's the CBS label, which has the, uh, looks like the Columbia Eye. <laughs> So I can't even pronounce the song names. They're all African kind of. So if you see this, definitely pick it up. It's money. So what else did I grab? Yeah, like I said, beautiful day here today. I went to play golf this morning. First time of the year. Don't expect to do too much golfing, but I had the chance today and I really enjoyed it. Beautiful day, but man, that sun is killer. So I picked up this, which was really cheap and I've never seen a copy. I know it's not rare, but I've never seen a copy around. Marvin Gaye's Trouble Man soundtrack. And I thought I had this on CD, but I didn't see it when I looked through. Um, but this is incredible. If you don't have this, definitely check this out. If you, I mean, whether you like Marvin Gaye or not, this is, there's not much, it's mostly instrumental. There's not as many vocals on here, but it is definitely worth a listen. Definitely some funky stuff. 
on here. I'm sure most of you guys know this already, but if you don't, definitely check this out. This one, the vinyl comes out. So, fold out like that, and the vinyl comes from the top on Tamla. I won't deal drop this for you guys because it's pretty readily available. You can probably hear it online as well. But all I can say is if you don't have this or if you haven't heard it, it's definitely worth listening to. Okay. So the reason I went to the record store was I have asked them to order in a copy of the new JJ Gray and Mofro album. Probably a band that's unknown. To most of you, Southern, sorry, sirens going off here, um, Southern kind of group from Florida, rock, uh, funky, soulful, rock, kind of some, even some country blues, I don't know, they mix all types of different genres. They had a new album that came out, and I figured I'd support, so I bought it without hearing it. I'm not, I haven't fallen in love with this album, I don't know if it's their seventh or eighth album or something but always a group I've a group I've seen live a few times and always a blast to see live I've seen them I think one two four times I've seen them live now and I just have a blast so their new album is Old Glory and it doesn't have the same I mean it has some of the same vibe but as I as what I've come to love why the reason I've come to love them so I'm a little disappointed I find some of it a bit bland a bit slower but uh i'll play you guys a little bit so you get an idea of what they're all about this is one of the more upbeat tracks they definitely have some funky moments especially in their live shows man they just tear it up live just simple simple fun instrument funky instrumentation so bluesy funky soulful rocky country they blend it all swamp music this one the vinyl is made in the eu and it's on a label i've never heard of before provo them and what I'm describing kind of interests you and what you're hearing the album to check out I mean they have all their albums are good but the one that really got me hooked onto JJ Gray was Country Ghetto that's the album to check out I don't have that one on vinyl I started buying their vinyl after Country Ghetto Orange Blossoms is dope too and then they came up with uh, Georgia War Horse and the, This River and this is the one after and then they have even some before that as well are all great. So, kind of this slower track. That's what the label looks like. Nice label. It always has some really kind of more touch songs that touch you and then other songs that makes you want to just move. So yeah, if that interests you at all, it's worth checking out, but I would definitely start with either their first album or start at Orange, uh, Country Ghetto or Orange Blossoms and work from there. Okay, now to some jazz. The rest is all jazz. 
So quickly, I will show this. John K. Techhead was playing this in his album, in his most recent video. And Billy Cobham, A Funky Thigh of Sings. And it sounded groovy, it sounded funky, and I was, the next time I went to the store a few days later, it was there for two or three bucks, so I grabbed a copy, I listened to it. It's not, it didn't blow me away, but definitely some funky, some cool stuff on here. I'll give it another listen for sure. Okay, this is the one I was really happy about. It is Coltrane Live at Birdland. Yes, when I saw this, I couldn't believe it. The label said, that the sticker the record store put on it said, U.S. Press, and it wasn't, unfortunately. It's not the first time they do that. It was a Canadian, but that's okay. It's still an original impulse, an original Canadian press, and it's not in the best of shape, but it plays great. So I was happy to get this for 10 bucks because it's an original Canadian press on impulse, pressed by Spartan. I don't know if you can see that. Not really. Those are the, that's the Spartan label, so that's what the, the Canadian ones, they were different colors, so this is live at Birdland. The gatefold, on the other hand, is in impeccable shape, and it is the same as the American ones. So this is a mono copy on Impulse, category A50, and I'd never heard this, and it, no surprise, is amazing. So, bulking up my Coltrane Impulse collection, I got uh, Live at the Village Vanguard, and recent, not that, a few months ago, so slowly, oh, and I picked up the Ellington and Coltrane on Impulse Japanese Press, and I picked up the Japanese Press of Africa Brass, so, you know, happy to get this one as an original, not an original American press, but that's okay. So, I won't needle drop this, but... I mean, it's Coltrane, it's from the 60s, I think from 64, from the impulse period. You know, it's, it is incredible. So when I went to the store, they also had a ton, they've gotten, I guess, a collection of jazz, someone's jazz collection, hundreds and hundreds of jazz albums, but all late 70s, 80s, early 80s, through the 80s. Uh, not bad, but not, you know, I wasn't going to go crazy buying them. A lot of stuff on Soul Note and a whole bunch of OJC pressings. So I picked up two of those. I don't usually buy them, otherwise I would just be buying them all the time. But it's two albums that, one that I really wanted and one that I listened to there and sounded amazing. So I got it. That's what we're listening to now is Sunny Rollins Freedom Suite. So they actually had this OJC pressing and then they had a... I guess a second press on Riverside from like 62, I think this album's from 58, but yeah, from 58, they had a 62 pressing of it, but it was 30 bucks and I don't know, on, this was half the price and on Discogs, the, even the reissue wasn't, didn't, wasn't anywhere near that, so I don't know where they got that price from, but anyways, and it sounded scratchy, so I was happy to pick this one up. And this is the original cover, which I like much better than the, the uh, 62 reissue. So OJC pressing, I think it's my first, no that's not true, it's the first one I buy in a long time, but I think I have a couple others. So this is dope, this is on Riverside, and it's with Oscar Pettiford on bass, Max Roach on drums. So just the trio, just ripping it, so very enjoyable, Sonny Rollins, 58. You can hear Max Roach there, just keeping ten. So yeah, it's that. The other one I picked up was... Mal Waldron's The Quest. So I've seen this be shown a few times. And I saw it, and I jumped on it. I wasn't going to leave it there. I'm never going to see an original. And if I were, you know, probably wouldn't be spending the money on it. And the other option would be a Japanese press, I guess. But... I don't know that, I don't think I've ever seen one of those either. If ever I see a Japanese press, maybe I'll upgrade, because it's a killer album. This is on New Jazz, which was a subsidiary of Prestige, I believe, and based on, or is it Riverside? No, Prestige. Anyway, um, so Mount Waldron, Eric Dolphy, Booker Irving, you also have Ron Carter on uh, cello, 
John Joe Benjamin on bass, Charles Persip on drums. Incredible if you don't have it. Thank you for everyone that recommended this. And yeah, OJC. Last one I picked up is well, this was actually um I don't know why I bought this. I did well I do know why, but anyway. My first Blue Note Japanese pressing. And it wasn't expensive. It, it wasn't it's not a 70s pressing, it's a early 90s, I think it said. But I was curious to hear what it sounded like. And I didn't know the album. I don't have it on CD. And I don't have any of I didn't I don't have any of the CDs actually. Duke Jordan, Flight to Jordan. So this has Stanley Turntine on tenor sax, Dizzy Reese on trumpet, Reggie Workman on bass, and Art Taylor on drums. Really beautiful piano work on here, and I love the cover. Classic, classic Blue Note. This is a stereo copy Japanese pressing of uh, this album. So happy to pick that up. Some great jazz finds. I mean, come on. Sonny Rollins, a Blue Note, a Riverside, and this, and the Coltrane. So, yeah, I think I did pretty well. I was pretty happy with those jazz finds. So that's it. Uh, if you haven't entered my contest or you don't know about it, check out my, I think, two videos ago. Anyway, contest for some t-shirts. To win a t-shirt that I, out of the Needle Groove t-shirts that I put together. If you haven't seen them, check out needlegroove.com. If you want to enter the contest, it's pick a jazz label and show me what you got. So any jazz label you like, even if you don't have it on vinyl, if you have the CDs, or if you just want to talk about albums that you love. But I'd love to hear about a label that you love and why you love it and your, the albums that you have from it or your favorite albums. So that's it. Uh, going to, I'm going to not be buying too many, I won't be buying many records, trying to avoid going to the record store, but there will be a sale. The record store, my favorite record store in Montreal is having a warehouse sale in two weeks. And I'm going to check that out. Apparently everything's a dollar. So I don't know if it's going to be all crap, but one of the guys that works there told me it's worth checking out for sure. So if everything's a dollar, I don't know, obviously it won't be in the best condition, but we'll see what I can find there. I don't know how organized it's going to be, but I'll let you guys know how that is, if it's uh, worth talking about at all, okay? I'm sure it will be. Take care, guys. Peace.